to the cloud. To the cloud. Somewhere up in the cloud is this recording going to be. <laughs> Hi, sis. Hi. Yeah. Hi, beautiful family. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, this morning's lesson is a review of lesson, well, it's lesson 176, God is but love and therefore so am I. And we will be reviewing lessons 161 and 162. Sis, do you want to read those for us? Yeah, well, we won't be reading the whole original lesson. Yeah, right. But yeah. just, I've got some snippets here that I took that really stood out. And, um, and I think that, that, of course, God is but love and therefore so am I. It's really important. Um, and, and I think that um, we really are able to reach that feeling state of knowing that as we forgive our brothers and sisters. Yeah. It's impossible to really uh, anchor ourselves in the feeling state, God is but love and therefore so am I, while we, we still harbour some resentments against other people. So it uh, let's just talk about this other review here, which comes from Lesson 161. Give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. Give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. And, and yeah, yeah. So let's, let's just talk about that, sis, for a bit. Sure. Um, especially the holy sons of God that totally trigger us. Um, that's where the gold is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's look at that. Remembering perception's basic law. I know we've repeated this a few times but it can't be heard often enough or read right. often enough. You see what you believe is there and you believe it there because you want it there. Not you, the holy self, but the ego wants it there. So whenever we're triggered, mm -hmm. it's because, and Jesus says this elsewhere, we put it there. Oh, that's a big slap to the ego, isn't it? Right? We put it there because the ego wants to prove separation. That's right. So we have to have a feeling state of a division. And if our natural state is, you know, God is but love and there so, therefore so am I. Well, that's every single brother. That's the truth of every brother's identity is love. And so the ego's job is to fragment the love that we are into privatized bodies and minds. And then it defends that first thought of separation by differences and judgments and um, stories, right? It's our triggers about our brother. We're seeing him as he has, it's impossible for him to be. There stands the Christ, but for my wish for separation, I've got this whole filter running in my mind and I'm, I am superimposing or laying over a brother a story that I have in my mind because there's that decision. I want separation. I value autonomy and I need to protect myself from my brother who is love. So all of this guilt and fear in our mind upon the thought of separation um, is projected out there on the world and specifically onto our brothers. And so what Sis is pointing to is that always to come back, how quick do we do a knee-jerk reaction? I'm unfairly treated. My brother did this to me. He's the problem. He needs to go. Then I'll be okay. And so this fundamental law, right, of perception, no, 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 no. What you're looking at is a projection from your mind. The only reason that you're seeing it is because you put it there, because it's in your mind. And why did you put it there? because you want it there. Why do you want to see your brother that way? Because it gives you that sense of I'm me and that's somebody else. It also there. brings in, thank you, sis. It also brings in the ego's love or need to prove mm -hmm. it's pseudo innocence. It's fake 
innocence, Always. right? Always. And that's, it needs to uphold that. And the only way it can uphold that is to make others guilty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But it hides from us mm -hmm. that it's that it's accumulating guilt for us so that it can separate separate us further and damn us to hell. And death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got to laugh. That's, that love it. that bloody thing. ego. Yeah, that's the mantra of the ego, isn't it? Behold me, brother, at your hand I die. You know, I'm I'm unfairly treated. You need to you need to change. You need to stop. You know, heaven forbid we should stop and take accountability and recognize that all of this was orchestrated and called forth in my mind at my direction. Me, mind meaning mythical me, the ego. Right. So we're constantly orchestrating and calling forth the scripts and what we're seeing in the images. It's handpicked. It's it, there's nothing random. We're mm. everything we're experiencing is because we've asked for it. And it's not a judgment. Yeah. And and one old pattern that I got very, very good at recognizing, and I, I, I'm thinking probably everybody has this pattern, but maybe they're not aware of it, um, is that uh, before we say, say we get mightily triggered by somebody, yeah. and it could be a stranger, and uh, it could be, say, in a supermarket. Mm -hmm. Somebody says or does something outrageously stupid and, and we can feel the rage bubbling up, right? Well, what I've noticed in my own experience is before I even got to the supermarket, mm -hmm. on my 30-minute drive there, I was entertaining ego thoughts of separation on the way, right? And and was 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 believing these victim stories that the ego was feeding me in my mind before I got to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I had an expectation right that somebody was going to be challenging. Mm -hmm right fulfilling your wish right oh absolutely and now i've got to the stage now where if anything does seem to trigger me i can trace it back very quickly mm -hmm. to the point at which i left myself right i yeah. abandoned myself my my yeah. holy self and had already placed that expectation that somebody was going to really piss me off today right yeah. Right. Our thoughts are so powerful and they lay yeah. the groundwork for the day that you're going to have, which comes back to this, how important it is. You know, in the course, Jesus talks about how we think the day happens and the ego judges, well, it was a good day or a bad day. Actually, you can start by setting your intention at the beginning, set the goal in advance. Today is going to be used for truth and sanity. I'm joining with Holy Spirit. This is the kind of day that I'm going to have. I want to have. And then your experience lines up because that's the power of our, our thoughts, right? Um, so when you're harboring resentment or you're irritated and you launch out on your day, well, the world's just mirroring back to you what you've ordered up. Mm -hmm. So that we've got to be very, very careful about the thoughts that we're entertaining and uh, setting the goal in advance. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And um, something else that just came through too, which is the past. Okay. We're whenever we're <laughs> whenever we're triggered, we're always seeing the past, mm -hmm. right? Which has been projected by the ego over the now moment and over the Christ. That yeah. the other person is yeah. right? or that we are at the moment and so if we can just stop it and it's dead in its tracks there and realize when we're triggered by somebody wait a minute this there's a miracle here there's a miracle behind this right yeah yes. and in that moment we can really um, use this little prayer which is give me your blessing holy son of God like really really use it use it because that person who's triggering us 
-hmm. give me your blessing holy son of god in that in when we really really join with that and accept that we're actually actually bre breaking the ego's hypnotism we're breaking the ego's projection of the past mm -hmm. in that prayer and uh and the miracle or the holographic effects of the miracle that are going to go out from that are beyond our imagination yeah thanks sis so when so when you're about your day right and somebody triggers you practically i don't know like you're saying at the grocery store or, or mm -hmm. whatever somebody gives you a rude look and the old way was to react and respond with defense or, and counter attack mm -hmm. in recognizing that right here stands an opportunity to see the face of christ i'm i'm insane right i'm totally insane because i'm triggered and i'm seeing something that does not exist there's always the only view of a brother is how god is seeing him so here's somebody that's pissing me off and you know how beautiful how grateful we can be for these teachings to stay okay right now my mind is making a projection super over what's really here so what do you want to see do you want to promote the, the, the false self and stick with your story and defend and attack your brother and, and also attack yourself in the process? Or in this moment, all I am seeing is the projection of guilt in my mind. This is the ego. There's something else to see. I want the miracle. And you can turn to your in your heart, in your mind, and like really with heartfelt desire. And I and I love I love this prayer. It's just so beautiful. And practical you know, look looking right at them it's like give me your blessing holy son of god i would behold you with the eyes of christ mm -hmm. not the ego mm -hmm. right not based on a past that i think that i have which i don't i would behold you with the eyes of christ and see my perfect sinlessness in you mm -hmm. so here's your savior here is your he's off he or she the the, the jerk <laughs> is offering you an opportunity to behold your own sinlessness. And all it requires is for us to change our mind. Mm -hmm. Holy Son, you know, give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. And we don't need to actually say it to them verbally. No. no. We right just, in we can, yeah, yeah, in our heart. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah and he, so and Jesus says, and he will answer whom you called upon. For he will hear the voice of God in you and answer in your own. Behold him now, whom you have seen as merely flesh and bone, and recognize that Christ has come to you. There it is. So he's our savior. Or she's our savior. Always. Always. That's the way, that's the way we right. come back with our brother. You, because otherwise, we're going to be thinking it's them which the ego wants us to believe a real problem exists and it's their fault. But what's really going on is the self-hatred that you've heard me talk about is being perpetuated. That's our own stuff. Let it be healed, not, not protected by projecting, but bring it back in and let your brother heal you by dropping the sense of a past in an ego filter and just wanting to see the truth. Beautiful lesson. Thank you. Isn't it? I love that <clears throat> prayer. Yep. Mm. So the second part of lesson 176 is I am as God created me. God is but love and therefore so am I. <clears throat> this one always stays with me because he is so emphatic about the results if this is practiced heartfelt and faithfully. It's the healing of the world. It's the reversing of the dream. It's the end of separation. You know, this this is it. Like if we could really, really accept that all there is to us is how God created me. It's the declaration I am. Nothing has ever changed. There has been no separation. It's the answer to the, the thought of separation. I am as God created me. And, and nothing else. That's right. I am nothing else but that. No mixture. Somebody mm. was in a group last night saying, yeah, you know, he reminded me of Jesus says, there is no difference between us, none. 
We all wanted God. It's just that I, Jesus, didn't want anything else. Mm -hmm. So in your natural state, you are exactly as Jesus Christ is, was, is. In That's truth. Right. In truth. But while I want something other than that. That's it. Hmm. That's the gap, right? It's the gap. I know that God created me, and I'm also this mortal that was born and lives in New Mexico and la la la, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which one's true? You can't have both. Mm -mm. Story's got to go. The human story. The whole thing. Yeah. All of it. Even the things that we say are good, and yet he doesn't require sacrifice from us. He's saying, let go of even those things that you think are good in the gap because I'm going to give you something, that, the, the true model, something that never fails, never leaves, completely satisfies you, and brings your mind to a place of peace without fear. And that's a natural and organic process when we're ready. It's not forced upon us, right? Otherwise, it's the ego, the spiritual ego trying to, to force us. Yeah. To do it, yeah. Um, can I share this? I love this paragraph. It's from the review lesson we're doing. I am as God created me, 162. It says this, I am as God created me. This single thought held firmly in the mind would save the world. I am as God created me. Can you imagine that? From time to time, we will repeat it as we reach another stage in learning. It will mean far more to you as you advance. Well, sis, can I just stop there for a second? Yeah. Um, it'll it'll mean far more to you as you advance. Yes. Uh, oh, I see. Here's another line. He says, these words are sacred. I am as God created me. For they are the words God gave in answer to the world you made. By them, these words, I am as God created me. That world that we made with the ego, the world of fear, disappears and all things seen within its misty clouds and vaporous illusions vanish as these words are spoken, for they come from God. Wow. Wow. That's profound. But I just want to get back to this, where he says these words yes. or what they mean, they will mean far more to you as you advance. Right. Would you say in your experience that this means far more to you and it's different? Your understanding is different now than it was, say, six or seven years ago? Certainly, because what we made mythical me up as a substitute for God. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a good understanding of the nature of God and your relationship to God, these words are pretty empty. God is ethereal. God's somewhere in the clouds. God may or may not know me. It's like, what does it that even mean? But as you begin to ascend up the rungs of the ladder to a, in a, your awakening, and making this positive separation, recognizing the valuable from the valueless. Mm -hmm. And you you start having these glimpses and experiences of a love that is so euphoric and ecstatic and satisfying to a degree that this world can't even come close to. Mm -hmm. You begin to realize the sham. It's like, oh my gosh, wait a second. And this love is real and it's powerful and it's, and it's us and his love for us is perfect. And then you start to go, and this perfect love made me in its image and likeness. I am as God created me. So how can this, this pseudo self, you, you start to realize this, how empty what we thought we were is in comparison to what we must be. You make that leap from, I am not mythical me, but I am as God created me to be. So I am that love. And it's a whole new ball game. And so, yes, the more we become unselfed and practice that positive separation, the holy instant and holy relationship, mm -hmm. this statement becomes far more richer and carries with it a, a deep, deep knowing of home. Okay. It also brings up a bit of a challenge, mm. right? Because 
<clears throat> if we are trying to practice this, I am as God created me, like really, really take it into our heart mm -hmm. and ground it or anchor it deeply and have that experience. And yet we're not, we're not um, on this journey with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. We're still playing the specialness games mm -hmm. with our family, a partner, you know, uh, you know, our colleagues and friends, etc. Sure. Who were good, who would uh, believe that we've lost our mind if they found out we were studying mm -hmm. a course in miracles? How are we going to have this experience? I mean, how are we going to really understand I am as God created me? Well, I know just from working with the people in the TTC that they found us because they had that desire. You might be surrounded by, you know, everybody is a hardline atheist, wants nothing to do with anything spiritual. But that inner knocking is the holy self, and it is the call of God for his son. And when you say yes to that, the prodigal son hits the wall, drops to his knees and says, help me. That's all the Holy Spirit needs. And Holy Spirit can move a mountain in the blink of an eye and will open up a path to bring you to like-minded companions and support that light, that spark, you know, to breathe, breathe it into a flame and, and give it give it some foundation and and we find our our family don't we we always find our like-minded miracle buddies or our companions to walk with so well, yeah because jesus says in the course that holy spirit sends them to us yes and of course us to them right so that's beautiful it is it's so lovely that it's all done for us we put our hand up and say yes holy spirit goes great <laughs> i can work with this Yes. Beautiful. The longing to come home is always answered and it is assured because of our desire for it. It's when we put on the brakes that Holy Spirit has to stand back and wait. Ah, thank you, sis. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Can we just look at this? Um, can I just read the last two paragraphs on this? It's so beautiful. He, Jesus is saying, we honor you today. Yours is the right to perfect holiness you now accept. With this acceptance is salvation brought to everyone. For who could cherish sin when holiness like this has blessed the world? Who could despair when perfect joy is yours? Available to all as remedy for grief and misery, all sense of loss, and the complete escape from sin and guilt. And who would not be brother to you now? You, his Redeemer and his savior who could fail to welcome you into his heart with loving invitation <laughs> eager to unite hello? with one like him okay hello is anybody there in holiness yes sorry you yeah. the the recording stopped yeah it's still going no i saw the screen it, stop okay so it collapsed zoom collapsed mm -hmm. and then went off for a few seconds completely and then it came back up and the voice came out saying this um is being recorded just okay. so what what okay. happened i think that this happened once before and what happens is i get two separate recordings side by side and we can stitch it together no i think we just end that first recording where we just ended it where it ended oh, okay and just ditch this part okay is that all right, sis? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Do you know the word? What was the word that you spoke? The the last. We'll just say well, you you said yeah, thank you, and then we'll just cut it. Okay. All right. It'll it'll make sense. I hope yeah. I can do that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Stop this one. All right. <laughs>